Okay, in this video, I want to go through and look at a new model, but more than just a new model, I want to look at this sort of movement that we're seeing of how people are creating some of these new models. So the model that I'm going to look at is Neural Beagle 14 7B. So as of earlier this week, this was the top 7 billion parameter model on the Hugging Face leaderboard here. And in my early testing, it shows that this model is really doing a very nice job for a lot of different kinds of outputs, which we can have a look at later on in the video. First off, I wanted to talk about how this is made and how this is sort of an example of one of the key things that we're finding now, where people merging models and taking lots of different kinds of fine tunes and sort of you know combining them and creating family trees of some of these models in some ways as well. So if we look at the Neural Beagle model, its base model is a Mistral 7 billion model, which is probably by far the, the best base model that is out there at the moment that people can use. But when we look into it more, we can see that it's actually a merge of two separate models. So the first one being this Una the Beagle 7 billion model, hopefully I pronounced that right. And then the second one being this distillabled Marcoro 14 7 billion model which both of these are modifications on other models that have been out there as well. So the creator of the model is Maxime Le Bon, and he has a really nice Twitter thread going through exactly how this model was put together and some of the thinking behind this. So the idea here is that he's taking these two models and merging them together using, I think it's his wrapper for Merge Kit calling uh, Lazy Merge. And he basically talks about how the thinking behind the merging of these two models and also then using DPO on this final version, I guess, to polish the model or get the sort of preferences of the model in, in the way it responds and the alignment of the model working a bit better. So the key to all of this, I think, is really the way that people are taking other people's models and then iterating on them. And I think this is going to be one of the biggest things that open source has an advantage over the big tech companies in that just the sheer number of experiments that people can run very quickly and the ideas and the diversity of ideas that come from a bunch of different people doing these things and then people being able to take sort of one model that's been trained on one type of data set another model that's been trained on another kind of data set and then merge them together like in this case and then later on, use a sort of preference optimization data set to uh, do DPO or do some kind of RLHF on top of this. So when we see looking at the benchmark stats for this on the Hugging Face leaderboard, it's doing very well on a number of the key data sets in here. So personally, I'm not a fan of some of these benchmarks, like the Truthful QA, I think is a little bit ir irrelevant. But it, it is interesting to see, okay, how this does overall on these. And then I guess the other takeaway too is that if you wanted a model that is going to be a lot more suited to one of these benchmarks, perhaps the GSM 8K, you can then take one of the other sort of versions of these merged models uh, and use that. So we can see in here that Maxim Lebon again has another model that's I'm pretty sure is also a sort of merge which does a lot better on something like GSM 8K in here. So for me, the overall sort of idea that I find really interesting in here is not necessarily just this one specific model, but this whole idea of taking multiple models and then merging them together. So we've seen people do sort of Franken mergers where they're doing different kinds of merging various layers and cutting and pasting different layers together and stuff like that. If I understand correctly, this is basically just taking multiple Mistral models and then merging the weights and using different forms of averaging on the weights to actually get these merges. And it's kind of amazing that just taking two models that have different training data and that have different fine tuning data and perhaps different strengths can be merged together to actually create something that does better than those models. In some ways, it's amazing that it even works in the first place, that the model is actually able to use the various weights at each layer without, you know, a fair bit more sort of fine tuning to this. So I think in this case, the only tuning after the, the merge was the DPO tuning that was done for this. So 
it's interesting to to look at. So another thing that Maxime Lebon has put together is this kind of family tree of uh, models. So uh, this is, I guess, is for a different model that he's been working on. But I think it's really interesting just to sort of show like this idea of sort of merging this model with another model and then combining these two together. And it sort of opens up a whole new way of thinking about the steps of creating these models. In the past, we generally just think about pre-training, maybe some domain pre-training, then doing like an instruction fine tuning, and then finally some kind of RLHF or GPO at the end. Here, you can see people are really starting to merge a whole bunch of these kind of things together. And he's published a notebook for actually showing all this, and then people are starting to pick up from it. So we can see these family trees of actually these models and how they are coming together, which I think is or, you know already amazing. So you can see here already someone else has basically taken the model that I've been talking about, uh, and then they're merging it with other models and doing, you know, doing their own sort of extra training on top of this. Anyway, let's jump in and have a little play with the model and have a look at perhaps some of the strengths and things that maybe it needs to be improved on. It would be great to see people finding other models and then merging to, to improve this even more still. So let's jump in and have a look at that. All right, so starting off, I looked at one of the examples that they give of what is a large language model. And the output here is very similar to the other Mistral models. So I guess that's a good sign in that it's pulling out the same kind of thing. The next one up was basically the whole question that I used for writing a short email to Sam Altman. And this basically was just using the initial system prompt in there. And the email's good, it's fine. It's got the same sort of quality that a lot of the Mistrals have of where they like to sort of have numbered bullet points or that kind of thing where it's first, secondly, thirdly, lastly, that kind of thing going on here. Where it didn't do so well, and I'm not sure if this is due to the model or the way that the system prompt was going in, was basically giving it the exact same question, but then changing the system prompt to be, you are Freddy, the five-year-old boy from that. And we've seen other models with versions of Mistral, I think, that have responded very well. So I'll give it the benefit of the doubt there. Next up is basically looking at code. And we can actually see, even though I've just got one example here, the, the code it produces is pretty nice. This code works. I tried it out, uh, threw it into a collab and stuff like that, to see how it went. Next up from this, I was really curious to see the GSM 8K stuff. Now, it doesn't get all the GSM 8K, I think its score is around 70, which is still way higher than the Mistral's own Mistral Instruct model for this 7 billion model, which I think they're getting around 40 or something. So th this is definitely a, a big improvement overall. That said, this first one that I gave it, it didn't get the right answer. The answer actually is supposed to be you're buying 16 glasses, 50% of them are 60% off. The normal price is $5. So you should have uh, five times eight for 40 and then three times eight for the rest of them to come to an answer of uh, 64. It's got some interesting ways that it worked on the problem, but it didn't come to the right answer in the end. Next up in the similar sort of vein was the whole, can Jeffrey Hinton have a conversation with George Washington? This one, I like the answer here. It's certainly different than some of the other Mistral fine tunes. Of course, it understands that these people weren't alive at the same time. It doesn't go in depth of explaining that too much. And it does also raise the, the possibility that hypothetically, you could create a scenario where the conversation was simulated or was done with AI, et cetera. But in reality, they couldn't have a conversation. So I actually like that answer probably more than some of the answers I've seen that are probably strictly more accurate than that. Back to another GSM 8K. So this is the one that a lot of the Mistral models don't get correct when I've done the testing before. And this one does get it correct. So this is the whole idea of that you've got a deep sea monster, eats a ship every hundred years. The number of people on the ship is doubling. So it really, the best way to work this out is to calculate that, okay, if it's doubling, you have X plus two X plus four X over the three time periods in here. And it gets that, and it not only gets that correct, it's, it's able to then get the math right with the whole thing. So this is definitely impressive because this is one that a lot of the other Mistral models haven't been able to get. So it's interesting to see that when they've had a 30-point bump on GSM 8K, that actually some of these questions are now suddenly correct. 
I'd be really interested to see more in depth with some of the GSM 8K as well. Looking at some of the other standard GSM 8K questions, a question about the apples, it gets that. Most of the Mistral models have gotten that, so I think that one's not a surprise. The next one, a lot of the models got this, but we had to do the rounding for them. This model really sort of understands that, okay, the rounding is, it can sort of work that out itself. So it's kind of interesting that how it sort of worked this out. And it does come to the, the correct answer at the end, where it understands that Wing should be paid $10 for the 50 minutes of babysitting that she did through this. And finally, the, the last ones that I want to look at, two writing prompts. The first being a creative writing prompt that I've been using for testing some proprietary models recently. And this works pretty nice compared to models that are a lot bigger than this. So you can see this is basically just write a short story set in a futuristic world where artificial intelligence governs the entire planet. It comes up with a title. It's able then to put together, you know, a story. I don't know if this story is actually taken from a movie or from some sort of book. I'm not really sure about that. It'd be interesting to sort of see. But, you know, it's definitely gone for a longer format of response, which is good to see. And it seems to understand some of the key elements of uh, the characters and, and fleshing some of those things out. The final one that I tested out was this prompt for asking for sort of customer help of where I spilled coffee on my laptop and now it won't turn on. What steps should I take to address this issue? And it's good to see that, okay, it understands that it should have some empathy at the start. It also understands that the first step should be unplugging the laptop from the power source, drying it. So again, this is actually on point with the kind of answer that we see from big models from, you know, open AI and other providers that are more, much bigger proprietary models in here. So I think this is quite nice to see that the answer and the styling of, of it coming out is really good as well. Overall, I'd say that this model is definitely impressive and worth checking out. Like I said though, earlier on, for me, probably the big interesting thing is not just the, the, how good the actual model is, but it's how it's being put together. And if people are really interested, then maybe we can look at doing some videos about how to do the various mergers and how to do some of the alignment stuff with DPO and stuff like that later on. Anyway, as always, if you've got any questions, please put them below. I encourage you try it out, put your favorite prompts, put down what didn't work. I'm very curious to know what worked for you, what didn't work with this model in the comments. It just helps everyone to know what's going on in this. Uh, and as always, I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.